Alright guys, so today I'm going to be reviewing the all new featherweight sportswear training mask from Under Armour. Now this is the second iteration of the popular training mask from Under Armour. And I also have the first iteration which came out about the same time last year. So I'm going to be mostly comparing both of these masks and tell you guys what I think about them. So definitely the main selling point of this new Under Armour featherweight sports mask is that it is lighter than the previous version. The packaging looks great and you can see that they added the word featherweight there to emphasize on how light it is. In fact, it is promoted as being 40% lighter than the previous model. But I can't really justify that just cause I don't have a weighing scale to measure them both. I bought the size SM for this and it fit just right on my face. Not too big and not too tight and just a comfortable fit. I'm not really sure how you can nail the sizing for this mask but I heard that the Under Armour sizing that they provide was actually helpful to some of the people who got them so it's good to check it out. For me I just estimated the size of my face and bought whatever I think was right. I don't have a chubby cheek nor do I have a sharp jaw so yeah it's just based on my own personal judgement. At the back of the packaging they showcase how the mask is constructed and it's clear that it's a three-layered system that provides ample protection. The outer layer of the mask is a water-resistant, lightweight, breathable knit fabric while the midsection is an open cell foam that helps with breathability but also restricts the moisture and sweat from coming through. The last layer which is the inner layer which touches the skin of your face is made of Under Armour's ISO chill technology which helps to keep you cool as you sweat. Okay, opening up the packaging, you'll get the mask and the instruction manual. That's it. The first version did come with a mask carrier but I realized that I never really used it from the start and I think most people didn't as well. So maybe that's why they decided to exclude it from this new model. Comparing the two masks, I can confidently say that the featherweight version really does feel way lighter than the previous original model. The previous version just looks stuffy, padded and cushioned all around. But in the new featherweight version, they removed all of that and used thinner protective layers which definitely made it more weight saving. Another design difference of the featherweight version is that it is constructed only at the cup area of your face like an oxygen mask and I think it's quite smart because they save a ton of material weight when making them. The original version is just way more padded. So let's get to the performance review of the mask since it is a training mask and as you've already seen from the clips that I've used this featherweight mask for the past week in my workouts, put it through some hard sessions as well as easy ones and in my personal experience, you can use it for some specific training sessions. Training sessions in terms of easy to moderate intensity, not so much with the higher intensity workouts. So I think most of you all have seen the promotional video of this mask and seen all the elite athletes in the video doing some high intensity stuff, but that's not really the case for most of the average consumer like us. They're elite athletes, so their body is trained differently than most of us average consumer. So I don't think it'll feel great wearing this mask when doing those high intensity cardio workout. I've personally tried doing it and it was tough. I still had a bit of difficulty breathing with it. Cause I mean it is still a mask and it still restricts the airflow to a certain extent. Where it does excel though is those easy to moderate exercises like a recovery run or going to the gym in an aircon environment. It'll definitely feel fine doing those, but do it depending on your fitness level. 
Comparing both of these masks, I would say that I do prefer working out with the featherweight version because number one, it is way lighter than the first version so it's more comfortable on the face and number two is that it doesn't absorb as much sweat as the first version. Like I said, the first version is a more cushioned and padded mask so it absorbs sweat like a sponge and when that happens, it gets heavier and it makes it harder to breathe because sweat is like stuck in between the layers of the mask which makes it harder for air to flow in. This new featherweight version still does do that but just a little bit but definitely not as bad as the previous original mask so it's definitely way better. So between the two masks, which one should you get? Hands down is the featherweight version. I know that the original mask is older, so you can probably get it at a much cheaper price than the new featherweight version. But trust me, with all the upgrade that I mentioned, you're gonna love this new featherweight version a lot more. Speaking of prices, the original Under Armour mask retails at $35 in Singapore, but the new featherweight version retails at $29 in Singapore so it's about $6 cheaper than the original retail price of the previous mask so that's a good thing ultimately the question is should you get the mask I would say it depends even though the featherweight version is slightly cheaper than the original Under Armour mask in terms of retail price it is still just a mask and it costs $29 per piece even with all the technology that the mask has, it's not an easy recommend to everyone. But if you are planning to get a training mask for your workouts, just for the extra protection, I would recommend getting the new featherweight version compared to the older one, just cause I think you love it more. Well, that's it guys. Thank you guys for sticking till the end of the video. Do hit the thumbs up like button if you have enjoyed this and subscribe for more videos to come. See you guys in the next video.